Good morning. This is October 25th in the sermon, the video sermon uh, regarding God and the fact that He is with us. We do not need to be afraid. Last week, this is a continuation on the text from last week, which is found in Matthew, the 10th chapter. And last week, I concentrated on this, this fact that God is knows all, and God knows us intimately and beyond our understanding of how intimately that is. He knows us better than anyone else, even ourselves. And how can I say that, you might say? Well, first of all, we know that God knows all. The, the, the scriptures tell us that, and when we refer to God, we use a word that we hardly use for anything else omniscient. Omniscient means this all-knowing, all-encompassing all God of everything. And uh, he's beyond our understanding. The psalmist says in, in Psalm 147, great is our God and mighty in power. His understanding is infinite. Another passage, another version says, great is our Lord, abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. We cannot measure the vastness of of our God, in His understanding, in His power, in His love, even as it says in 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 Psalm 103, where it says, "You know, as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is His steadfast love, God's steadfast love for those who fear Him." It's infinite; you cannot measure that, and you cannot measure His forgiveness. And for in that same Psalm, it says, "As far as the east is from the west, so far He has removed." our transgressions from us. So we have this infinite God, infinite in knowledge. We have this infinite love that He is and gives. You know, it says God is love, and He gives this love to us. And we have this infinite forgiveness. So no matter how you look at it, God is incredible, beyond our understanding. And yet this God who knows all, knows us. And Jesus tells us that um, God knows the numbers of hair, hairs on our head. Now, none of us know that. No one that I've ever known, no one that I've ever will ever meet, will ever be able to tell me the exact number of hairs on my head, or his head, or anybody's head. But God knows. God knows that. That shows us that this infinite God that's beyond our understanding knows infinitely more about us than we can we can even imagine, or we can even comprehend or understand. And that is the basis for the truth that God is with us, and this is an amazing thing that is beyond our understanding as well, that God is with us. And we do not have to be afraid. In fact, the next verse, verse 31, says this, so don't be afraid. And before this, Jesus has talked about how God knows the sparrows that fall from the sky. And so in, in 31, he says, Do not be afraid, for you are more valuable than a flock of sparrows. Each one of us is more valuable than a flock of sparrows. Do not be afraid. And uh, so as I was... Uh, you know, taking that verse and talking about that last week, I wanted to go deeper and, and show you the context of this chapter. So turn to Matthew, the 10th chapter, and we'll look at this together and see if we can glean how this comes about in a practical way for us. Now, Jesus, in this chapter, in Matthew 10, he's sending his apostles out. Now, he doesn't just... Um, Say, okay, everybody leave. Just go out and tell everybody that the kingdom of God has come. The kingdom of God is that God has sent his son and God is with us, with, with them. He's, he's with them and he's with us. God is with us. That's the kingdom of God, that, that God is present in our lives, that God's, God's, God's plan, God's design, God's presence is all with us. It's here now. The kingdom is here in us. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, that's in the, in the Lord's Prayer, meaning that God can come down, 
God can, can, can work in us to do what he'd want to do, that we give him access. So anyway, um, in this passage, Jesus is sending out the 12, the 12 apostles. And I thought it was kind of interesting that in the end here, he's saying, do not be afraid. You know, do not be afraid for you are more valuable to God than a flock of sparrows. This God that knows all, this God that knows us intimately, he knows what we're dealing with. And he comes to us in a sense by his presence and by his promise and by his deliverance and provision. And I thought it was very interesting as I went back through this passage, I thought this Jesus sends them out, but he's addressing their fears, the common fears that all of us have and the common fears that all of us deal with. He's addressing them distinctly in many places here. As you go back and you look at um, verse verse 5 and verse 6, that's where he starts to send them out. And he says, tell them that the kingdom of heaven is near, that the kingdom of heaven is here. And then he says, heal the sick, raise the dead, cure the, cures the, those with leprosy, cast out demons, give as you freely have received. Here are some of the greatest fears that we face. Fears of sickness, fears of disease, fears of death. These are all fears that we have. These are all fears that we have. And what is God saying? What is Jesus saying? He's saying that the kingdom is here. God is here in these things. You don't have to fear them, so proclaim this. Heal them. Heal them of the fear of their death. Heal them of the fear of their of their disease. Heal them of the fear of the things that demonic things that would haunt them or or torment them the deliverer is here jesus is here that's what he's saying to them they do not have to be afraid maybe they thought back and thought of i thought it was very interesting because you could go back and you could take um, many passages in the psalms and the and the apostles would know these because they would have memorized many of these so maybe they went back to psalm 56 and thought I don't have to be afraid. I can trust in God. I can trust in Christ, who is God on the earth. The kingdom is here. Verse 9 says, Do not take any money, no gold, no silver, nor even a copper bag. Do not even take a bag for travelers. And do not hesitate to accept hospitality. Here's a great fear. Here is a great fear. The fear of provision. The fear of that we will have a place, that we will have um, something to carry us through, whether it be money, provision, um, essentials, whatever. And yet Jesus tells us in, in Matthew, the sixth, the sixth chapter, he tells us that, you know, we don't need to worry about reaping and sowing. And maybe the apostles thought back to this moment and thought, that's right. Jesus said we don't have to worry about those things. For if the God, if God takes care of the birds of the air and the flowers of the field, he will surely take care of us. But yet that's a fear that many of us have. You go on further and, it, and, he, and he, Jesus addresses that, the, the rejection. How many people have a fear of rejection? That someone won't like them, that someone that will push them away. And yet Jesus addresses that and he says, if you go into these cities and they reject you, shake off the dust off your feet. Why? Because God has accepted you, that God is with you. You don't need to be fearful of rejection. Maybe, maybe they um, remembered this verse from from uh, from Joshua. Be not discouraged, but be strong and courageous. Be not terrified. The Lord God is with you wherever you go. He's with us. We don't have to worry about the rejection of others. Then Jesus goes on and talks about the danger. They're going out as sheep in, in, in a pack of wolves, among wolves. There's a great fear. Many people have a fear of danger and a fear of, of, the, of the world coming against them. And then he goes on and he says, you know, you'll be turned over to the courts. You'll be flogged. You'll stand trial. 
Jesus gives us the fact that these are dangerous places. But are we abandoned? Are we alone? Maybe the maybe the disciples thought back to Psalm 23, where it says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. God is with us. God is helpful. God it provides. This mighty God that we can't understand, He is with us. You see, Jesus is telling, is, is somehow sending His apostles out to learn what? What is the main point of them going out? To proclaim the kingdom, of course. But what are they learning along the way? They cannot take anything. They cannot, they cannot in many ways expect much. But this is, a, this is a lesson in faith for them. That they can trust God to provide for them. They can even trust God where it says, Do not worry about what you're going to say. Because God will be with you and God will give you the right words. How many people worry and fear that they will say things just right? Maybe we need to slow down and stop in those moments when we're fearful and say, God, will you give me the words for this moment? Will you send your Holy Spirit to speak into my heart the truth of your word? Jesus goes on even to say that, you know, he has been labeled the prince of demons because he cast out the demonic. How many people have a fear of being labeled? Jesus said, if you're labeled, you're labeled with me. If you're labeled, you're labeled with me. Fear not. Isaiah 41, 3, 1 says, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you my name. You are mine. No matter what anybody says, no matter what any label that they want to put on you, you are defined by this, that you are called by God. You are His. And you can rest in that assurance, in that declaration. In verse 28, he goes on to say something very powerful. He says, Do not be afraid of those who would kill your body, but cannot touch your soul. Fear only God, for he can destroy both soul and body in hell. There's nothing to be afraid of. Jesus would go on to say to his disciples that he is the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, shall live even though he dies. Jesus was getting them to see that their life is defined by who they are. And they don't need to fear anything in this world because God has tr transcended through Jesus Christ this world and eventually through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ in the forgiveness and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit we will live in the presence of God forever. Verse 32 says, How many fear like the declaration of that you are a Christian? That's another thing that people fear, tend to fear. Like, well, people think I'm weird. It goes with the label, but even beyond the label, it goes with, with uh, the fact that you will be defined and you you might fear that. And yet Jesus, in, in the same verse that he tells them that they should not deny him but proclaim him, he says, you know, anyone that proclaims me and acknowledges me, I will acknowledge in heaven. I will acknowledge in heaven. I just wanted to do that, to go through that passage to show you that God meets us in our fears. 
And greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And so we have this direction for us that God is with us. This God that knows all, knows us intimately. What have we to fear? What have we to fear? Nothing. We have nothing to fear. In a sense, our direction of believers is this way. God tells us in the Old Testament that we should pour out our heart to him, that we should come to him, that we should cry out to him. He already knows our situation. He already knows what we're going through, but he will come to us when we cry out to him. When we acknowledge him, God is near the brokenhearted. God is near the fearful because they're acknowledging we're acknowledging our need for him in that moment. We do not need to fear because we have the truth in the Bible that Jesus gives us. He tells us he is the way, the truth, and the life. So all we have to do is listen. All we have to do is believe. And all we have to do is trust. And then in, as he leaves, he says, I will send another. I will send a comforter. And the comforter will guide us will teach us, will show us the living Christ whenever we need any help when we're confronted by fear. You know, in some ways, we go out into the world as disciples of Christ, sometimes thinking we've got to bring all this stuff with us, all that who we are, all that what we have, what we possess, all this stuff. I think Jesus is showing us here in this passage that the God who knows all knows us intimately. He knows everything about our situation, and we don't have to take anything along for the journey. We don't have to take anything along for the journey. In fact, we can count on the truth of this verse that Paul says in Philippians. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. How many things do we need? Nothing but God, really. Because remember who God is. Paul says in another place, he says, And the God, he will do more, infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Why? Because that's how big he is. That's how incredibly vast are the resources of God in our lives through Jesus Christ in the, in, in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not fear. Do not be afraid, for you are far more valuable than a flock of sparrows. These are the words of Jesus, and this is the truth that we can live by. Thank you for your time today. Amen.